Hello and welcome. I am Ladi Akiri Duluale. Tonight, Senate resumes with a bang, rejects all confirmation of nominees sent by the federal government to the National Assembly. House of Representatives summons Minister of Power, Works and Housing over budgetary allocations and comments. The Minister of Budget and Planning dismisses fares on 2017 budget implementation, says government will give priority to the document. And North Korea brags over missile tests, says it has successfully tested a long-range intercontinental missile. On business news tonight, Central Bank of Nigeria and National Communications Commission appoints Joseph Nanna as new interim chairman of Atisalat Nigeria. While on sports news, the Ministry of Youth and Sports postpones rerun elections with the boards of athletics, gymnastics and weightlifting and taekwondo federations to July the 12th. And from Abuja, May Tamasule, elder statesman and Nigeria's former permanent representative to the United Nations, is buried in Kano. We kick off tonight from Abuja, where the Senate says it is suspending confirmation of all nominees from the executive until all issues of confirmation as contained in the Constitution are adhered to. The Senate took this position following a point of order by Senator Ahmed Sani, where he drew the attention of lawmakers to a comment made by Acting President Yemiel Shibaju that the Senate has no powers to confirm nominees apart from ministerial and ambassadorial nominees. Our correspondent, Linda Higbe, reports. The Senate resumed plenary today with a bang, sending a loud threat to the executive that it would no longer confirm any nominee from the executive. If they follow through, this means that all outstanding confirmation exercises of any nominee has been put on hold until issues relating to the confirmatory powers of the Senate are resolved. Deliberated on issues... It was obvious that this decision was taken during a closed-door meeting earlier. Letter from the acting president. The Senate received a letter from the acting president for the confirmation of Mr. Lanry Badabi Amila as a director general of a National Lottery Regulatory Commission. Moments after the letter was read, a federal lawmaker raises a point of order reminding lawmakers of remarks which he says were made by the acting president. A statement was issued by the same acting president that the Senate has no power to confirm outside the provision of the Constitution. Mr. President, I think that if, if the vice president, the acting president said, we don't have the power to, to confirm, and then on the other hand, he's sending a document to confirm, which one are we taking? I think that Senate should put an early days a suspension on this uh, request for confirmation until these issues are properly resolved. If the National Assembly says you require confirmation, you require confirmation. And you cannot go and act until you get that confirmation. That is simply what he says. The leadership, if the leadership doesn't do anything on this matter within 48 hours, we will move against the leadership. A lawmaker made an observation which raised some eyebrows in the chamber. We have nobody in Nigeria who is at the head of the government. The acting president is outside the country, and so there is a vacuum. If the acting president, for whatever reason, is not in the country or is not on the seat, for whatever reason, the Senate president is the next in the line of succession. And if the Senate president, if the Senate president... With calm restored, the Senate resolved to suspend the confirmation of nominees from the executive until all issues of confirmation as contained in the Constitution are adhered to. The Senate also says acting President Yemi Oshibajo must immediately respect the rejection of nominees of the Senate 
Case in point, the Senate's rejection of the acting EFCC chairman, Ibrahim Magu. There appears to be chaos on several fronts. While one appears to be abating, another is brewing. But can the country afford another showdown between the National Assembly and the executive at a time when Nigerians are in need of respite from biting economic hardship? Linda Akibi, Channels Television News. More than 24 hours after the electoral body, INEC, released a timetable for the recall of Senator Dino Milai. The, the Senate says the recall process is a litmus test for INEC, which must show that the process is satisfactory. Senator Milai raised a point of order at plenary where he is alleging that the process of his recall is masterminded by the Kogi state government and not the people from his constituency. Making his contributions on the matter, the Deputy Senate President, E.K. Ekweremadu, says the recall process was deliberately designed to prevent lawmakers from being recalled for frivolous reasons. This recall is not initiated by my constituents. It is by the state government. And I want to bring this attention to the attention of my colleagues that this orchestration and injustice and lies and malicious manifestation of my governor should not be entertained in any democratic setting. For you to recall a parliamentarian, you have to pass through some processes. And so, in 2010, this parliament amended the constitution regarding section 69. So what this is simply saying is that that number of those who are supposed who are, are, are supposed to have act, are requested this record, they are supposed to line up somewhere in Kogi State with the Dino Malaria and his lawyers sitting there and each person will come and say, this is my signature. And until you do that, you cannot proceed further. They will still come back here and convince each and every one of us that they have done the correct thing. Unless they do that, you cannot even give effect to it, sir. So why are we wasting our time, sir? I think they let us move on and allow them to waste their time. In the lower chamber, the House of Representatives has summoned the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatide Fashola, over his comments about the alterations made to the 2017 appropriation bill by the National Assembly. A lawmaker, Representative Ibrahim Sadiq, raising a point of privilege, accused the Minister of breaching his privilege by saying that the spokesman of the two chambers of the National Assembly displayed stark and worrisome gaps in their understanding of the workings of the budgetary process. The lawmakers say the minister has also succeeded in undermining the integrity of the 2017 Appropriation Act by his comments. Our correspondent, Larry Lassisi, has that report. The 2017 Appropriation Bill being signed into law. Details of that document has sparked off a face-off between the National Assembly and the Minister of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola. Resuming from their two weeks recess, the matter comes up as a matter of privilege. A specific comment amongst others reportedly made by the minister is said to have breached the privilege of this lawmaker. That he said in National Assembly, these lawmakers had stuck and worrisome knowledge about the budget of his ministry before altering several of the allocations in the 2017 Appropriation Act. He moves a motion asking that the minister be summoned. This House, if you will, form an ad hoc committee to summon the Honorable Minister without prejudice to his right of, uh, of uh, with his right as a Nigerian to speak his mind, to summon him to appear before a committee of this house or ad hoc committee of this house to answer on the breach of privilege of this house and the incitement of Nigerians against their elected representatives. Even when some lawmakers ask that the matter should not be discussed since it is to be investigated, one lawmaker states his position before the matter is put to a vote. I want to put it clear, Mr. Speaker, that this House will not take it lightly with this kind of utterances. This House must not take it lightly with this kind of statements that is capable of really undermining our mandate and our constitutional integrity. This House should not take it lightly. The Minister should be called to answer these charges of insult to the institution of the National Assembly. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, serve it. 
Meanwhile, the majority leader of the House, through a point of personal explanation, spoke on his visit to some prisons in the country and the need for the House to take some urgent steps. We need to come up with a bill that will cover and address the issue of decongestion of prisons. One, by creating community services for offenders. The motion was passed unanimously. Lanre Lassese, Channels Television News. Moving on to judicial matters, the Federal High Court in Abuja today dismissed the four charges of terrorism brought against the immediate past Senate leader, Senator Ali Ndome. Senator Ndume, who represents Borno South in the Senate, was exonerated of the charges by Justice Gabriel Kolawale on grounds that no case was established against the lawmaker. Delivering judgment in a no-case submission argued by Mr. Ricky Taffer on behalf of the senator, Justice Kolawale held that the prosecution failed on all fronts to link the defendant with the alleged crime of hoarding information of terrorism activities and sponsoring the Boko Haram sect. Charges of terrorism are not easy charges, but the charges, I must say, were merely instigations. They could not be proved because they were baseless, and there was not a no scintilla of evidence in support of the allegations. Of course, from the very beginning, it was obvious to government that the charges cannot be proved, because uh, Senator Ndume was a member of the presidential committee on the security challenges in the Northeast. And he had forwarded whatever interactions he had with the Boko Haram said on his basis of becoming and being a member of that presidential committee to the vice president of Nigeria as at that time, the director general of the state security services, and to the man or person in charge of security services at the National Assembly. So nobody was in doubt as to what the presidential committee was doing relating to the uh, security challenges in the Northeast. And we have been vindicated in court this morning, and we thank God for a well-reasoned decision. The agitations for restructuring are political calculations for 2019, and most of the politicians advocating it will abandon it when they get power. These are the views of a former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, Mr. Olisa Bakoba. At a press conference held in Lagos today, Mr. Bakoba urged Nigerians and especially civil society to wrest power from the ruling political elite to achieve a new system that is inclusive and works for all. And since 1914 to date, we've not had any autochthonous, meaning we've not had any homegrown process in which people are involved in the creation of their constitution. And that's our problem. So to just go to restructuring without asking some key questions, I think is fundamentally flawed. Nigeria's sovereignty is not sacrosanct. Nigeria's sovereignty is sacrosanct for those people who are eyeing 2019. They will do this, deceive us, go to 2019, pretend that uh, uh, restructure is the issue. They are now climbing on the bandwagon of popularism. It is not in the interest of Nigerians to listen to what I call the conspiracy of the elites. The conspiracy of the elites is to be found in either the APC or the PDP or whatever new party emerges for 2019. We need to look inwards and determine how best we can grow our country. And I think we can do so by asking the real questions. And it is not for nothing that Nam De Kano has sprung up from nowhere. Let us be honest. It is not for nothing. Here's a guy who no one knew suddenly springs up. Why? Because the politicians have created the space. Politicians are not on the ground. They sit in Abuja and talk, and people can relate to their own ethnicities or subnational groups. 